Back in the 1970s, astronomers studying the cosmic microwave background, the leftover light from the birth of the universe, discovered something astonishing. Our galaxy and everything in it, including you, is hurtling through the universe at an incredible 390 kilometers per second. That number is almost impossible to grasp. So to put it in perspective, since you started watching this video, you have traveled more than 11,000 miles. And you thought you were being lazy on the couch. Hello and welcome to ZE. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Accurately measuring the speed of our galaxy for the first time was a significant achievement, but it was also a bit alarming because no one knew exactly why the Milky Way was moving so quickly. Part of our velocity could be explained by the expansion of the universe, known as the Hubble flow. Some of the rest was due to the gravitational interactions between the Milky Way and our nearest galactic neighbors like Andromeda, but something was still unaccounted for. We appeared to be moving at a speed and in a direction that we couldn't quite explain. As though our entire galaxy was being pulled off course by some vast, distant object. This was unsettling, to say the least. But there was more. It wasn't just the Milky Way being drawn towards this mysterious, unseen object. It was everything, every single galaxy in our region of the universe, around 100,000 of them in a region spanning more than 500 million light years, was being pulled inexorably towards the same unknown entity. No longer just unsettling, this was downright terrifying. Using their creativity, astronomers decided to name this mysterious object the Great Attractor. But naming it was the easy part. The hard part was determining what it could possibly be. There is only one force in the universe capable of nudging entire galaxies off course over hundreds of millions of light years. Love. Sorry. I've been listening to a lot of music lately. What I meant to say is gravity. Gravity is generated by mass. The more massive an object is, the stronger the gravitational force it exerts. To attract 100,000 galaxies over hundreds of millions of light years, the great attractor must be enormous, unimaginably, mind-bogglingly colossal. The question is, what is it, and more importantly, what's going to happen to us when it finally pulls us in? Let's start with the first question. We typically learn about distant objects in space by using telescopes to observe them. But when astronomers first tried to study the great attractor, they quickly realized that wasn't going to work. The Milky Way is a spiral galaxy about 100,000 light years across, and its 100 billion or so stars are concentrated along a plane 1,000 light years thick. Unfortunately, our view into deep space through the plane of our own galaxy is almost entirely obscured by vast clouds of interstellar dust and gas. This section of the night sky, occluded by the plane of the Milky Way, is known as the zone of avoidance, and it obscures our view of about 10% of the universe. And you guessed it, the Great Attractor lies right in the middle of it. For several decades after the Great Attractor was first discovered, its true nature remained a mystery. We could only study it indirectly by measuring its gravitational impact on the galaxies around it. It allowed us to determine the Great Attractor's approximate location between 150 and 250 million light years away in the direction of the Norma constellation. And we got a hint at its massive size, around 10 quadrillion solar masses. That number was perplexing. Nothing in our universe is even close to being that massive. As of today, the biggest single entity ever discovered is an ultramassive black hole called TON618. So large it seems almost unreal. This behemoth black hole is almost 250 billion miles across and powers a quasar that shines with the light of 140 trillion suns. It may be the biggest thing that has ever existed in our universe. It is an awe-inspiring, terrifying nightmare of oblivion incarnate, yet it is estimated to weigh in at just 66 billion solar masses. Not too shabby for a black hole, but still around 150,000 times less massive than the Great Attractor. Incidentally, scientists may have recently discovered an even bigger ultramassive black hole, Phoenix A, 
with around 100 billion solar masses, but there's still debate about its true size. Anyway, whichever is larger, the question remains. If the biggest thing in the known universe is nowhere near massive enough to explain the gravitational effect of the Great Attractor, then what could? This is usually the part of the video where I tell you that we have no idea. Except this time, we do. It's almost impossible to study the Great Attractor using regular telescopes, those that gather light from the visible part of the spectrum. But visible wavelengths aren't the only ones available, and in the 40 years since the Great Attractor was discovered, we've made huge strides with radio and infrared telescopes. These technologies have finally allowed us to peer through the zone of avoidance and glimpse the patch of sky containing the mysterious and enormous Great Attractor. So what do we find? The universe's most colossal black hole? An intergalactic megastructure built by an advanced alien race? Kanye West's ego? Sadly, no. What we found was more galaxies, loads of them. Okay, that might sound anticlimactic, but seeing what lay beyond the zone of avoidance finally helped us understand the true nature of the Great Attractor. But in order to explain what it is, we need to go back to the beginning of time. It's easy to think of the universe as random, a swirling mass of 200 trillion galaxies scattered everywhere. But that isn't the case. The universe has a clearly defined large-scale structure called the cosmic web. Scientists aren't entirely sure why this structure exists, but the most common theory is that the early universe wasn't uniform. There were tiny fluctuations in the distribution of matter. The denser regions had more mass and gravitational potential, attracting even more matter. Over billions of years, these mass-rich regions grew richer, and the mass-poor regions grew poorer. It was intergalactic capitalism. Gravity shaped the universe, pulling together grand structures and leaving nearly endless voids. The structures follow a clear hierarchy. Stars form galaxies, galaxies form galaxy groups and clusters, and these groups and clusters form superclusters. In our corner of the universe, the hierarchy is, our star is part of the Milky Way, the Milky Way is one of about 40 galaxies in the local group, and the local group is one of about 100 galaxy groups and clusters that form the Virgo supercluster. For a long time, we thought the Virgo supercluster was our entire cosmological neighborhood, but we were wrong. When we finally saw beyond the zone of avoidance, we realized the Virgo supercluster, containing about 45,000 galaxies, was just one branch of a much larger structure, the Laniakea supercluster. At this point, we're so far beyond human comprehension that the numbers become meaningless. But for the record, the Laniakea supercluster is about 520 million light years across and home to around 100,000 galaxies. It's really big. But here's the most important part. The Great Attractor is at the center of it. Actually, that isn't entirely true. The Great Attractor isn't exactly in the Laniakea supercluster. It is the Laniakea supercluster. When we saw beyond the zone of avoidance, we realized the Great Attractor isn't a thing. It's a place. We're often told to think of space-time as being like a trampoline. There's criticism about that analogy, but it works here. Place a heavy weight on the trampoline, and the surface deforms, representing space-time curvature. The more massive the object, the deeper the deformation and stronger the gravity. The Great Attractor is simply the deepest point on the trampoline in our corner of the universe, the gravitational center of a vast cosmic structure that all surrounding galaxies are falling towards. So we figured out what the Great Attractor is. But what about the second question? What's going to happen to us when we get there? Here's where things get more confusing. The Great Attractor is between 150 and 250 million light years away, but let's call it 200. Traveling towards it at 390 kilometers per second, we should reach it in about 95 billion years. Except we won't. We will never reach the Great Attractor. The universe is expanding, and the rate of that expansion is increasing. We may be hurtling towards the center of the Laniakea supercluster at breakneck speed, but thanks to the accelerating expansion of space-time, the distance to the Great Attractor will eventually grow, even as our speed increases. It's confusing. So let me give you another analogy. Imagine two ants crawling towards each other on a balloon. If the balloon stays the same size, the ants will meet. But if you start inflating the balloon, the distance between the ants will increase. Inflate the balloon fast enough, and no matter how quickly the ants crawl, they will continue to get further apart. 
That's what will happen with the Milky Way and the Laniakea supercluster. Our distant descendants will never reach the Great Attractor. For those into existential dread, it's worth noting that the expansion of the universe won't just take us away from the Laniakea supercluster. It'll cut us off from everything. Today, the observable universe is 93 billion light years across and contains an estimated 200 trillion galaxies. About 40 of those, the ones in the local group, are gravitationally bound to us. We're with them for the long haul, but the rest will eventually recede into the cold, dark reaches of space faster than the speed of light, at least relative to us. Since nothing can travel faster than light, no human will ever explore those galaxies, no matter how long our species survives or how advanced it becomes. Even the light from their stars won't be fast enough to reach us. The grand cosmic web of the universe we know today will fade away to nothing. Thanks for watching. Just a quick word to say that I couldn't make these videos without the support of my Patreon members. Consider joining the exclusive 42 Discord community by supporting me on Patreon. It's a great place to discuss my videos with like-minded individuals and myself. The link's in the description. But if you don't want to or can't join my Patreon, then please don't worry. A simple like or comment to say thanks would also put a huge smile on my face. Thank you.